Yes. Good morning. And welcome to the morning devotion. I'm Matt. And I'm Randy. And we're here to encourage you through the words so that you might be strong in the faith. And live victoriously in Christ. Amen. Amen. It is February 1st. February. January's gone. One twelfth of the year already <laughs> gone. Really? That's what we thought. Yeah. That was, uh, <laughs> you summing that up, that was 2020. So he's like a cat right now in his older age. He licks his hair, and then the hair gets stuck in his throat, yeah. and he makes this blah sound. <laughs> so anyway, welcome. Welcome, Scylla. Glad to have you this afternoon for those over in the UK. Randy said, Randy said, I just have Psalms 34, 1 through 8, just eight verses. It's all hers. Love you guys. Good morning. <laughs> Heavenly Father, Lord, I pray that you would just help us, the Lord, hear your word as it speaks into our hearts, that we might apply it into our lives. Father, bring it alive. Lord, as we hear it, and let it, Lord, be something that we just meditate on throughout the day. You know the exact words that need to be said. Help us to hear them, that we might be encouraged in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I know we've done Psalms 34 before. A couple times. Yes. But morning, I David. love it. I woke up this morning. Good morning. Morning, Kevin. Good morning, guys. I woke, and I'm sure Breath is there too. I woke up this morning with just that, that first, you know, psalm. First words, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. But I want to tell you a little bit about this psalm. Um, it's a psalm of David. It says, when he pretended to be insane before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. Now, some people sometimes say, oh, you see, there's a mistake there because when you go to listen, hear that story, in the story it calls the king, um, let's see, I have it marked it, Achish, A-C-H-I-S-H, A -C -H -I -S -H, the king of Gath. But the thing is that Abimelech could be used as a title. So I got this and I forgot to write down what dictionary thing it was from. It says, the name or title Abimelech is formed from Hebrew words for father and king and may be interpreted in variety of ways, including father king. My father is king or father of a king. In the Pentateuch, it is used as a title for kings in the land of Canaan. So it's not a mistake. It's just that he's just referring him as a king. He's not even giving him credit for the name. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the king. More of an essence. In that area. So here we go. I want to here read you that, that little story. Ladies and gentlemen, mm. please keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all times. <laughs> this is where this psalm came from. First Samuel twenty one. And it says this. It says, And the priest said, The sword of Goliath what had happened was David is running away from Saul. Saul's still coming after him. Saul is looking for him. And they were hungry. He didn't even have a sword. And he goes and finds the priest and asks the priest for bread. And the priest explained that all he had was a show of bread. And he goes on and says, well, I can only give it to you if, um, you know, there, no one's been, if, the, if your men haven't been with a woman. And he says, no, for the past three days. And he just goes through all these little details. And then he asks the, the priest, he says, look, I don't even have a sword. I have nothing to defend myself with. He says, do you have something? And the priest told him this. And the priest said, the sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here, wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. We'll talk about preparation. How the Lord, you know, and seeing again that sword would remind David of the salvation of the Lord that day. It says, if thou wilt take it, if thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other to save, no other that, no other save that here. And David says, there is none like that, 
Give it me. <laughs> and David, I like that translation. Yep. There ain't no other sword like that one. <laughs> uh, that, or the, and that's the only sword here. <laughs> and David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David, the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands? So here, some of the people in the where he had gone to, or the city, are going to the king and saying, uh, Do you know who's just come into our <laughs> our city? And it says, the, warrior, and, the David the warrior is here. And it and, and says, And David laid up these words in his heart. So he heard what they said, and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. You know, here David has been running, running, running. He went over here to try to get away. Just for a little bit. And what does he hear? They recognize him. <laughs> but think of the words that they used. You know, in a way, I think God was again planting a seed in David. Here he gives him Goliath his sword. He goes into this city, and what do they do? They remember. <laughs> they remember the saying that happened when he slew Goliath. Yes. So think of how God, little words he'll use here and there. God, let him hear that. And it says, and David was afraid. I mean, he heard these words in his heart. He was so afraid of what is this king going to do to me now? You know, he's by himself. It says, and he changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad in their hands and scrabbled on the doors of the gate and let his spittle fall down, his spit fall down his beard like if he was a madman. <laughs> then said a quiche unto his servants, Lo, you see the man is mad. Wherefore then have you brought him to me? Have I need of a madman that you have brought this fellow to play the madman in my presence? Shall this fellow come into my house? Now in those days, they had a superstition about insane people. They wouldn't kill someone insane. Instead, they would just try to get him to leave the city to get out. David knew this. <laughs> so David said, okay, if I act like a madman, they're not going to kill me. <laughs> they're just going to have me just leave. And that's how, you know how in the to, in the, the New Testament, the, the guy in the, the tombstones. Mm -hmm. and the, they the were graveyard, all afraid of him. They were afraid of They didn't, it, I mean, they could have killed him at any moment, but they didn't. This was a superstition thing that they had going. And it says, and David therefore departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam. And, and when his brethren and all his father's house heard it, they went down thither to him. And this is interesting. And it says, And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in debt, and everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them. And there were with him about four hundred men. You know, the anointing of the Lord, the presence of the Lord in your life is going to attract people. And it's not going to be you, uh, most of the time, the big fancy people. It was those people that were in need, that were in trouble. They saw, they felt, they knew that God was with David. Um, God will bring you from different situations. You know, probably the last thing he felt he needed was oh, a bunch of people. You know, it was probably very nice to see his father and his brothers come to his aid. Uh, but then all these other people. But God gave him a song Amen. in the midst of all this. And this is the psalm. Psalms 34, 1 through 8. This is what David did. This is the psalm that he got. The song that came into his heart. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear it and rejoice. Exalt the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me, and rescued me from all of my fears. They looked to him, and were radiant, and their faces will never be ashamed. Those are that come to the Lord. This wretched man cried out, and the Lord heard him. And saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and rescues them. What and a beautiful the, psalm. And the way it says here, the angel of the Lord there, um, most uh, Bible scholars believe that that was the incarnate Christ, the 
No, it's not incarnate. What's the right word? I'm using the wrong word. A an uh, angel of the Lord encamps about him. Yeah. It, Christology. Christology. Christophanies. Christ in the Old Testament. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6 says this. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Acts 16.31 says, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Yep, if you keep a praise song in your heart, and rejoice in the Lord always, you'll have a victorious life in Christ. Amen. Re Remember, in the midst of all the craziness, things were not smooth for David at these times. Amen. But yet, he found a song in his heart. Find a song to the Lord in Amen. your heart. That's how you apply the word into your life. Yep. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock yep. when it's not drizzling rain yeah, out of the trees. We don't even know how tomorrow morning is going to look. Oh, yeah. yeah. Tomorrow morning, I have to take <laughs> something to the airport. So we don't, we we'll, don't we'll, we'll see how that's going to go. God bless. Love you guys. See you tomorrow. Hey,